Uh, Chinese AK, just do what I say and nobody die I open the soda, I get the codeine and I pour up a lot I pour up a lot, I pour up a lot Me and my niggas, we go up a lot We so up, you not Do say, do say When I get home, I'ma throw up these shots When I get home, so drunk I knock Right, you already know Here we go, it's your boy Joe Cool Here my man Sean With me, man I'm cool kind of, guy as well. Mean. Yeah, he is. Um, I mean well. It's, it's, That's it's, what he means to say. I mean well. It's number two, man. We we, we had some good, uh, some good, good reviews, good looks, good uh, successful number one. This is just another low show we're gonna throw at you guys, man. Just discuss the movie that we both, I think, have some good feelings about. Want to discuss? We kind of late on it because we should have been discussing it and kind of uh, having a. It is his fault. You should kill yourself. Retail. That's all I have to say. <coughs> Piece of shit. More retail. Yeah. I actually work in the sky. I just, you keep on, it, the the schedule always fluctuates. People, some of the people watching right now, they know what I'm talking about. Fucking, they do. Ugh. Anyway, yeah. uh, The Revenant this evening, we're going to be reviewing. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, flick the shit off because we're going to be talking about the entire movie. That show for uh, not seeing it. You should have been seeing yeah, it. Yeah. Now that it's in theaters, I don't understand why you haven't seen it. It's, that's... Uh, I know Star Wars is out there. Hateful Eight's out there. Awesome movie. Uh, uh, Hateful Eight was an awesome movie, man. Yeah, we're we're gonna do another po- uh, video cast, podcast, whatever. Uh, on the Hateful Eight, we're gonna do some more. But this evening it's gonna be the Revenant. So if you have not seen it, please turn the dial. Or you can listen in because you're late anyway. You probably ain't going. You should have been seeing it. I'm about to get it on Blu-ray. But uh, so <laughs> let's just talk about the opening. Uh, let's just start from the beginning. Actually, yeah. let's just talk about the stars first, and we'll dive into the movie. Yep. Uh, two main characters I'm gonna talk about. I think to keep it short and sweet is gonna be uh, I'm gonna say Leo, of course, and then we're gonna have to go with my man um, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Let's keep Favorite it short and sweet. Favorite actor of all time. Favorite's pretty sweet. We could talk about the little boy who plays uh, Pennywise, an upcoming hit, but I don't really like him too William much. William Poulter is that his name. That's a good call on that. Man. I, don't, I didn't have that name to pull out, so I'll give you kudos. Poulter. Good job. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. What did you think about Tom Hardy? Uh, well, that that we're definitely going to delve into. But if, if we're going to start from the beginning, I'm always I'm always a fan that uh, when a movie starts out with a premonition or foreshadowing, and in which case this was foreshadowing uh, with his wife who is uh, a dead, and she is peppered throughout the film. Uh, you know, just Back, a little, right little pet. Just a little pep talk, a little pep talk for the lady, to Leo. Um, but once I saw that, saw that, I was, I was like, okay. And we, we literally go from that into this amazing hunting slash uh, battle sequence between the men of the frontier versus the engines. Ruling, ruling the lands and not particularly happy about being pushed off their lands. And it is this amazing uh, arrow battle sequence that even even that they it wasn't like it wasn't something like Hero uh, Jet Li where you had you know like thousands of arrowmen represented. Like there, it was just kind. It was like thirty on thirty. Yeah. You know, like Royal it, it wasn't too big, but Royal the way, Rumble. Royal Rumble. It, yeah, exactly. Uh, Royal Rumble. Uh, I think uh, Roman Reigns is going to. Uh, he has to fight all thirty this year. First time ever it happened. Revenant. Hold on. Arrows fight all thirty. I don't. Yeah, no. What's up? It's, it's yeah, I don't. Dude, I don't, I don't, actually, about I don't follow the rest of the night. Yeah, I still do. Yeah. I have DVR. I would never watch three hours <laughs> straight, but I focus, do have the DVR. Focus, I stay focused. the DVR. Um. Anyway, this amazing ba- uh, arrow battle sequence that. This truly illustrates this new era, I think, in filmmaking, where it almost feels like when you watch Alejandro and uh, Inrutu, uh, his movie is Birdman, for those if you haven't seen it, uh, the way that he goes about shooting these things with the no cuts, well, what we, what the eye sees is no cuts, but it's not, not entirely accurate, just, it, it's, it's nothing hard. And it makes you just go, oh my gosh, like the, the 90s, 80s, early 2000 filmmaking was kind of lazy. And this gentleman comes along and just kind of goes, 
this is how you could present a war sequence or how you could choose to move your story along, in which case long ass takes, but so, not really. So it's safe to say that um, The Raid, when it had the uh, non-stop, non-cut non sequels, one of your favorites as well, correct? Uh, the Raid has a good one. Uh, the Raid 2, that, that final sequence is crazy. Uh, but that, again... Could be incorporated into American film. The, he brings up the raid. That's uh, an Indonesian film. Uh, so uh, another, you know, uh, cultural point of view, if you will, that makes American filmmaking. Uh, you, you could try harder. You could try a little harder, <laughs> as far as like from be, uh, behind the camera. Um, but yeah. So sum it up, man, because you just gave him a lot. So sum it up. So well, no, this is just the first sequence. We're just, you know, I, I figured we could go Act One, Act Two, right? I mean, right. what did you think about that sequence? Were you not sitting there the entire time going? All right. So, so me personally, I thought that uh, it started out. It was uh, first of all, the the, cinema, the cinematography was phenomenal. I thought that just coming into it, them showing just the landscape, the viewpoint, the horizon, the sun, just that alone. All, all the exterior was, was, shots were amazing. It was awesome. amazing. So I, I think just starting off there, I think they set it up very, very well for just, you know, so you can appreciate the movie. But I thought that uh, at first I was kind of like, what's going on when they did the old flashback thing? And then they jump forward into, I mean, it makes sense after while you're watching, after you after yeah, you watch pepper, if give you give it pepper. if you watch for five minutes it starts to make sense so uh after that when they go into the scene but like you were talking about with the not with not having cuss and it just goes right into the uh the guy the native american or the indian on the horse and he's going to doing this thing and he uh you shoot you see the guy get get hit with the arrow and the indian gets hit in the head and yeah. knock off the horse and then cuss right back to my man leo even the scene where it's in the water where excuse me the guy's getting drowned Alter. that's an awesome scene in the soap where it's like the camera you wouldn't. You would think the camera's getting wet, but it, it's flawless. There's no hiccup. There's no drop off in that. So I think the beginning scene is set up the tone very well for what kind of movie oh, it's going to yeah. be. Because you didn't see that coming. It's like you're watching it. You're sitting back. And, and I all. like how they did the subtle arrows, like we were talking about earlier, like where it crept up, crept up on you. It wasn't like yeah. they made this huge sound effect. Yeah, it like wasn't like a big old Michael Bay explosion. Yeah, it was very, yeah. It was very, it was very cool. I like, like how they did it. But uh, I like how they, I like how set up it, and they also. Uh, the, the way they they also made you realize who Leo and who uh, Tom Hardy was instantly in that scene throughout the whole movie. It showed that Hardy was about himself, about them pelts, about making money. Yep. <laughs> Tom but, Hardy's got a man right. over his exactly. shoulder trying to save exactly. human lives. Exactly. Well, no, not, no, that's Leo. That's not Leo, the, not Tom Hardy. Uh, yeah, Leo. But now the one thing that they did show that was kind of a, that kind of set up the important part of the movie was Tom uh, was when Tom Hardy saved. Uh, What's his name? Will, uh, well, I want to say William Poulter. I don't know. I could be saying his name wrong exactly. the entire time. Well, it's I think the, the last name is Poulter. I think that's set up a part, but I had to play important with with, uh, with Leo. But that was kind of weird because for me, the kind of person he was throughout the movie, I don't think that Tom Hardy would stop to save him. Now, maybe it was only for the reason that the ending was completely not paying attention. In that moment, it was not for him to do that. But the type of person I feel like Tom Hardy was in the movie, I kind oh, well, we of, learned I right after surprised. that sequence because we go from the arrow sequence into the boat, and he is screaming definitely racial obscenities. Oh yeah, yeah. it was right. a dick. It was a dick. It was a dick. But but uh, I thought it was a good scene. Long story short, to keep it moving, I thought it was a good scene, very well done. And then um, I felt that just the cinematography was very well. I appreciated cinematography is not often i watch what i'm like wow that's a gorgeous scene i can appreciate what was going on with that but i also can appreciate like you were saying uh the way that shot was done i mean that, that was a phenomenal scene so very good movie and it set the tone because it smacked you in the face you know what i'm saying you're sitting there chilling you got a guy got an arrow with the neck yeah. next you know you got that guy with an arrow to the face and it's, so it sets it very that well for a very intense scene but you can't take your eyes off it because there's so much that's going on so very well done, and then it leads into the conversation with them happen on the hill, setting up the well, on the boat we go to. Oh, where it's you the boat. Hear so how, let's go ahead, let's move forward. How hateable, and we can talk about this for a minute. Yeah, that's, how yeah, hateable that's, yeah, yeah. Tom Hardy is it starts to become. You you learn very early on. You're like, and me, I, I don't watch trailers. Everybody else, it's on. So I I just I refuse to see them. So I had I knew nothing about what I was going to see when I first saw The Revenant. So I had no idea who Tom Hardy was going to play other than he was going to be in it with Leo. And the first sequence is him tree... Yeah, over there. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't do both. It's, it's almost too hard for me to remember to be looking at the camera and not all your icons down at the bottom and stuff. Like, I can't. It's, it's, it fucks me up bad. Because when you start talking, I'll just it, see that's so much better. So much better. I don't want to look at the icons. Anyway, 
So we lead into how hateable Tom Hardy is with his racial obscenities. And right out of the gate, he disagrees with Leo about what they should do next. Leo's like, we got to get off this boat. We got to get into the forest. Whereas Tom Hardy's like, no, we need to stay in this boat. We need to continue on the river and fuck you glass because he's going to get us killed. Which turns out he was wrong. They would have sat on the river. They would have got pop, pop. Yep. Yep. Yeah, well, mm. in terms of they just, well, they, there's engines everywhere in this movie. They <laughs> oh, they are called engines. Engines. <laughs> you know, little engines. Uh, oh, that's and, funny. Engines. So we, we get to the shore after, you know. I wonder if it's like a real bad racial slur for them, like engines. Yeah, it is. Really? Yeah. And I engines. think they call them the reed. Yeah. The reed. Um, wow. But, uh, no so we we get off the boat and uh, well, right out racist. of the gate. I'm black. I can't be racist anyway. Go ahead. I'm just <laughs> right out of the gate. Uh, Tom Hardy is already very angry with Leo and the decision for the, the commander to take him out of the boat. And he starts basically trying to fuck with the son of Leo and Leo. And oh, you're like, man. Uh, and you're for me, about, you're about when we start throwing the shots and it's him and it's the mom. And right. The and he grabs oh, the man. gun. Like, oh, did you kill man. Lieutenant? Yeah. So yeah. And for me, I was kind of just on a sidebar. I thought Tom Hardy was going to be a good guy. And it turns out he is despicable, which we haven't even got into the worst yet, but we will. So now we have a solid character development as far as, who is what you have your minor characters, but obviously it's Leo predominantly as you'll soon find out, but um, you're going to have two dudes. Everybody kind of felt really second pedestal, you know, like there was oh, just, as far as character development. yeah, I mean, like you thought you could incorporate a couple, but well, it was I mean, two. They gave you like, like I'm, the only characters I felt uh, was, was everybody else. Like you said, was like a second fiddle to them, but they, that's what the movie was about. Though. It was really about these two people that became, it, it was really about Leo and, and what Leo had to overcome, and it was a big focus on that. The reason why Tom Hardy played at such a huge part because his events of what he did triggered so much of what Leo happened. So it was kind of <laughs> like Tom Hardy was parallel to Leo, but even though it, it, a lot of the movie focused on Leo and what they had to go through in his own, it was parallel and it was, it was directly correlated to what Tom Hardy attributed to. So you know what I'm saying? Yep. So even though it was focused on him, he is so much, it's like a. You damn! You cut off my pinky, so I got to go rehab my pinky. So all this you shit. You don't is talk shit about the family. Once you like, start in on the family, you start ripping right, the right, right, right. skirt. But 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 I, I like what you said. It did kind of show the kind of person that he was. It showed his character. So <laughs> like, they we make thought you he was hate bad, him. but he's right. But they despicable. they make you hate him, and that's good. That's a good job by the director and by the producer. They made you hate that character. That was a job. They made you feel in it. The reason why they did a good job because it made you feel for Leo, like you empathize for Leo. So. That when you feel for a character, when you have a relationship with a character, when you feel sad for a character, when you feel mad about his son getting killed, like when he got when the second guy was like, You motherfucker, I like you know that. what I'm saying? So, it, it, I, when you do that, that's a good movie. I think that's a good sorry. I just want to put that out there, but I feel what you were saying. I love that line where at the end of Tom Hardy's rant, he grabs Leo's gun and uh. The only thing Leo says in the entire exchange is... I'm a smart one on the end of this pistol. Yep. You're yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Buffoon. Yeah. He didn't say buffoon. I made that up. No, I think he did say buffoon. Check it out. Um, the next sequence, literally after that, after they set up camp, is probably one of the more gruesome scenes I've ever uh, witnessed uh, in cinema history, which... Uh, apparently everybody knew. I didn't know. Again, I don't, I don't watch trailers. The bear. Wait, wait. Before we get to that, another thing, side note. Uh, another part where they good character development is how they show uh, and talked about Tom Hardy with the uh, getting scalped. Yeah. To go through that. take that, his head. To that, to go yeah. through that, they got to mess you up mentally. So that kind of just shows the insight of what kind of person he was. It also, it shows you had kahunas too because you got to be you gotta have some. You knew he was like crazy. You, you knew, knew he was crazy. crazy. Right. So it just goes that much more of how they tried to develop the character, show what kind of person they was, even showing how the little boy was willing to go and stay, show that he was a he was a soft hearted person. That's why he broke down the owner in town and blah blah blah. So I think it was just excellent character development, and it made you get a good relationship. Go ahead, finish up. Go ahead. Jump no, there's it. no Inside. finishing up. Bear time. Yeah, bear time. Yeah, I didn't mean to stop your rank. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no. Into it. I. <laughs> He, he made it weird, didn't he? Didn't I'm he, folks? Not. He made it weird. I'm trying to keep it short. I'm trying to <laughs> yeah. let you go ahead on, but uh, so anyway, there's 
the I, I would rival kind of passion of the Christ as far as brutality was concerned. Maybe maybe I'm overshooting it. Maybe I've had too many beers this evening, but I thought it got to a certain point where it was kind of like, oh, this is getting to be too much, <laughs> just a little bit too much. So, but so well done that I wasn't like like Passion of the Christ. It was just like whipping all over again. Where this is no, lots no, of Passion movement. of the Christ, where you have. Flesh getting ripped. Yeah, the but it was just over. Hand. It was the same thing over and over the again. Nails the nails on the hand. The crucifixion. Bro, that the, shit was rough. I get what you're saying though. That I shit was just as bad. Christ, yeah. and then the I shouldn't be saying <laughs> shit. Even. Engine. No, He's the Lord's engine. name in the same sentence. But uh, but listen, that's, we were talking about a movie. Yeah, that's yeah. Not saying we were talking about a Mel Gibson anti-Semite movie. <laughs> um, hey, he racist, ain't he? Fuck. He, ain't he nah, racist? he just doesn't like the jit. Apparently, oh, okay. He if you're cool with the black folks, he's cool with me. Oh, well, I, don't get me wrong. I'm cool with the Jews, too. But hey, as long as he ain't saying about black folks, I, I was going to be say something. Oh, yeah. you shouldn't say what you said about the the Jew, Jewish folks. You shouldn't say that. I know. They hate the Jew, don't they? That's so stupid. Anyway, the, uh, what's the, the, Jew? the, the Jews. Oh, the Jew. So the bear sequence, uh, first of all, the bear looked phenomenal, I thought. I don't know about you. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought it was really, I thought like, it was really so shit. I was about to run off the chair. I was yeah. I almost hopped out and ran off the chair. I, I and I love the reveal. That's why, like, you wanted to, like, you. you it was tense as hell because, like, they set him up where they're looking at each other. And he 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 cocked his gun. It was too and, too late. And the thing, I, no, no, what I thought, I'm like, bro, that that gun ain't big enough. <laughs> really? That's a, that's a gun for a Bambi. If he was looking at Bambi, <laughs> that's a gun for Bambi. That bear was looking like, bro, this is gonna be a mosquito bite, and he whooped your ass for that mosquito bite. <laughs> Yeah. Literally, and I ain't gonna lie, like the part with the claws, cause like, like you right, it got on, it got to the point where, cause it was the point where he mangled him, and then Leo stabbed him, and shit, he he, he, he giving the run for his money, and it got to the point where I'm like, he is messing the him up. The throat's where I lost it, like he no, already no, no. had his back for me, for me, for me, when he clamped down, no, when he ripped bit up his back and he flipped him, then he was biting his guts, but then when he started doing this with the claw, chick, chick, <laughs> At that point, I'm feeling every single rip because you seen them just grab. So they did it so well, like it was. And so then the, the one rip on the neck, I'm like, bro, he just ripping. Every, I'm like, can you imagine? That's like, bro, I'm like, I'm holding myself at this point. Like, I'm watching movie like this. This is how I'm watching the movie like this. Yeah, I'm that's looking, what happened. For I'm me. looking at. I'm looking at movie like this. I'm like, and then I'm holding this like, <laughs> is he is he okay? Then, oh man, the throat rip. The uh, throat then rip it was like, literally made me it go. Was like, they said, get the kid. I'm like, bro, I ain't no kid for that shit, bro. What you got? What kind of kids you working with? What you got? Yeah, a fishing the, the, kid? especially back then. Especially back then, yeah. which oh, is so he hilarious. Just, oh, he just killed his son? Ugh. He just killed his son right here? Oh, Joe's man. good idea was, to, like, oh, let's man. roll tape on the actual... That's crazy. Uh, no, not the movie. He doesn't. Anyway, <laughs> so there was the... The, it was the end of the bear sequence, They they tumbles to a fall. You got Leo with the bear on top of him. With this, this they had no meds, as as mentioned. And you... all The... The... the uh, makeup effects that were on his back, because uh, we didn't see so much on the front, but the makeup effects that were on his back were oh, so good. Oh, bro. So good. Oh, like when not, actually oh. it settled when the... When oh, the yeah, when they yeah, showed yeah. it. Oh, yeah. look, you the, see me? You see me? That's how, that's how it makes <laughs> you feel. I'm look, I'm acting like it's happening to me right now and shit. I got to give myself a control. But, oh, you feel it, bro. Uh, then when they showed his... When he when he was drinking water and it came out his neck, oh before we oh my gosh, man, that shit was horrible. Uh, I'm sorry, man. I'm yep. I'm not over exaggerating. When you watch it, you feel them. Like you feel For it. Sure. Go ahead, bro. Go no, ahead. you gotta I mean yeah. you that you'll feel you'll feel the back, you'll feel the throat. Mm. So much. So I feel bad for drinking this beer because it's so soothing and good. I can't imagine <laughs> having a big ass hole in my throat. Yeah, that would be hilarious. <laughs> drip out of his neck. Um so they wrap him up in whatever you know concoction they could come up with and ultimately he's just uh stiff as a board and is now incapacitated so mm -hmm. we lead into one of the more brutal kind of steps in a character you could possibly take which is uh tom hardy does not want to uh, continue on with Leo. He wants to get the fuck out of there by any means necessary. Even if it means... He wants the pills! <laughs> even if it means Gotta killing get these Tom pills. He, The pelts! He, the pelts or pelts? Pelts. Gotta get the pelts! pelts. Gotta get all them wolf pelts that they spent out there about six months trying to get. The pelts. Um, 
at a certain point, Tom Hardy is asking Leo to blink if he realizes that he's going to keep them from living and he should they should say fuck him and tom hardy literally stuffs a cloth down his throat and <laughs> says you better make peace with god you know, or maybe you don't and just this weird sequence which leads into leo's son seeing this happen and Tom did he Hardy. pull it out of his mouth for him? Did he pull the pit out of his mouth for him? Yeah, he pulled it out of his the mouth. The son did? Uh, no, 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 no. Tom Hardy ultimately does after he kills the son in so front of Leo. Uh, Leo, that was one of the stronger points in, uh, for me as far as his acting was concerned. We like it was it was hard to watch Leo watch his son die. Like it was, if you're sitting there going. Because, uh-huh. because you, I, 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 obviously, I can't say I can relate to that, but I cannot imagine literally witnessing. You know what I'm saying? Your son get killed in front of you. That's a very, like that scene, and then like, and the the, the reason why Leo was such a good actor, and my kudos to him, is because it is. <laughs> it's because you know what I mean. Like when you when Leo can't speak, but you see his face, and his face makes you say, "Damn." Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like that's you got to be a good actor, yeah. man. Like you have to be an actor. He could not literally speak. Like it's a part of the movie that's 20 minutes long where this dude can't speak, can't talk. But his facial expression, the scene where he's talking to Tom Hardy, saying, "If you want to die right now, just wink." That shit was so <laughs> tense. But he, Leo can't even talk. No. So the creator scene is that dynamic, that tense, that that impactful, and have you in NGOC because the whole time you like this. I was clutching my you like you like what's what's, what's what's going ha- you know what I'm saying what's going happen and, and the creative scene in that tense when the character literally can't even speak and it's that tense so you got to be that's good skills I can respect that um, so I, kudos hats off for that and then um, like you were saying the scene with the son the fact that you can just see inside of somebody's face or somebody's eyes you have to be a phenomenal actor to make me feel that and Tom more- too even when he's you. delivering that speech to him you're like oh. Oh yeah, you want to just hit him in the face, <laughs> punch you in the face. Look, punch put up you. your dukes. Wait, punch. Look, wait. Put up your dukes. Punch you in the face. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> it reminds me of vacation with uh, keys in it, and, and Sonny's like, "Come on, hit me in the face." Son. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, so that uh, <laughs> Polter comes back. Polter comes back after. Oh, it was a good movie, after yeah, the, the the sequence where his son dies and. Uh, Ultimately leads into Tom Hardy lying to Will Poulter to get him out of there and uh, leave Leo there, which he convinces him to do. He says there's some engines running around, so <laughs> him and Tom take off. But That's in point. within the sequence, I think becomes a even. I thought it was slightly more brutal from an emotional standpoint than the bear, because uh, Tom Hart at, at one point Will Poulter's like. Hey, uh, we, we we have to at least bury him. Like whatever, we can't just leave him here. And Tom Hardy says, "Oh, you want to bury him?" And yanks him by the feet about a good ten feet into a pre-dug hole that he starts to begin to cover uh, fresh dirt on Leo. And I thought I was just that was like that's one of the most. He's officially a villain. He's one of the worst villains ever. He's trying to bury right, no, a man no, alive. No, no, uh, compassion, no remorse, <laughs> no even like human no, characteristics. No. Like you're a straight animal for that. You know yeah. I mean? So that was kind of ratchet. That was ruthless, man. Like I said, it makes you. It's all about character development, and it's all about building a relationship with those characters. Like if you can make a movie where you literally hate, and or you love, or you have a connection with the character it's a good movie so that's hands off for that so what's the what's the next thing what's the next, uh, what's the next we thing? i think we then will polter and tom hardy go on their way and leo starts to you know eventually heal which as we mentioned before with the wife begins to come become a more of a uh, role in the film as far as carrying leo on with lines i think like talking about the wind and how the uh the base of a tree pending the tree's strength and will it, it won't be moved by any of the wind. anyway it gets him up and rolling you have a very tense sequence where he's laying on his son which is heartbreaking somebody asked me it was like oh how was the revenue i was like oh gut-wrenching heartbreaking gut-wrenching heartbreaking beautiful tense gut-wrenching so anyway 
you, you I thought finally I just, thought it was just good. I thought it was just good, really good. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Wow. The, we do these things for wordplay. <laughs> anyway, well, so after that sequence, now we are officially with Leo for predominantly. Well, we check in on Tom later, but um, Leo pulls himself out of the grave essentially. Literally, what am I talking about? Literally, and uh, begins to you know nibble on little little things that he finds in Didn't the forest. He like a, uh, what did he eat? A rat or a rabbit? Well, the first thing he finds is a what frozen is uh, deer carcass. That oh, he that was already out. ate. He, yeah, he, that was scavenged, already dead. he scavenged yeah, this, a dead carcass. Yeah, yeah. Then he ate like a frozen fish raw, just sushi style. <sighs> yep, yep. Uh, well, somewhere in there we have that sequence where. The Indians find him, and he begins his whitewater rafting tour, which, you, you know, I he's got that bear coat on, but that had to have been cold as fuck. If, if they filmed it all natural, which that's the big thing about this film, is all natural light, um, so the, all the elements were real, and he's just, I'm sure he had, you know, scuba gear or whatever, but I'm still cold as fuck to take that props. Maybe he'll win. Maybe he'll win. Are you boycotting the Oscars? I'm boycotting the Oscars. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, so I've never watched that bullshit. Like, honestly, i never watched the Oscars because we never win. So it's not like it's a surprise to me. Did you say we? We're, we're black. Yeah. <laughs> black people never win Oscar, the Oscars, bro. So we, I'd never watch it. It's not. As, as a matter of fact, I don't know why Chris, I hope Chris Rock says something smart. I was almost going to watch it just to see if Chris Rock address it. Like, yo. I watch every year. It's my Super Bowl. It's my Super Bowl. You hate that, don't you? We're going to have a whole other podcast about that. that. You just compared the Super Bowl to the freaking bullshit-ass Oscars, bro. You just made my blood pressure go from here to here. It's yep. bullshit, bro. Oh. Anyway, so listen, back to the focal point. I'm not, I don't watch the Oscars anyways, so I don't really care. So me saying I boycott this or it's me doing this shit I do every single year. I never watch that shit. We don't win. They don't give it to us. Hey, go ahead. So man. after the Whitewater rafting tour, uh, I believe old Leo... Uh, <laughs> Seals his neck with gunpowder and fire. Oh, yeah, that was uh, from cold, the bear claw. Because that, that he mentioned earlier, he's drinking water and comes uh, out. He comes out, and he ultimately that made. I was like, I did one of those. I and, did one of these. <laughs> I'm watching it. You know, I was watching my girl. I'm like this. And then I met. I was. I feel bad because at the time I was drinking. Probably I was drinking a beer like this, and I was drinking a beer. And so you feel bad because I'm drinking it, and it's. Mm, and then he's drinking this like. Uh, I'm like, ah, my bad. I feel it. It's kind of like when you walk past a homeless person eating a big ass, like, subway 12 foot, or like a uh, Jimmy I've never John's. Seen a homeless sub. person with a foot long ever. No, no, it's like if you, like, in a restaurant eating, like, a big ass, like, steak, and, like, a homeless person outside the restaurant, and you, like, looking out there, and then you just, like, oh, my bad. It's good. And he out there homeless in the street. It's kind of like. I you, give him a buck. You don't want to look at him while you're eating a big ass steak on the street, just. Last time I tried to give a homeless man food, he turned me down. So I'll never do that again. <laughs> so I just, it's money or bust. And if they, I've actually had homeless people tell me, oh, a dollar, no thanks. What? All right. Later. You must be around <laughs> them, 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 them fancy homeless people because I ain't never had no homeless people. Charge five like bucks a pop, apparently. Man, I gave him home. So after the next deal, I think we eventually, we stumble upon Leo's friend, uh, which is a, engine that uh, had just killed the <laughs> buffalo and engine. Leo uh, asked for food and get some square um, ultimately they have uh, the secrets they be really become friends with I, the I, snowflake sequence. I think that I think that scene in the movie um, snowflake se sequence that's why I was doing that I'm exactly. not just the, sno the snowflake <laughs> sequence to show like bonding amongst just kind of people just having a common bond and it not being no bullshit, you know what I'm saying? And then Leo passes out, and he just, he he builds he him just, a hut. You gonna it, cut off my soliloquy, I was trying to go into my whole little... Yeah, your friends, builds him a hut. Ahead, it's twi it's twice say, now, cry. this dude, it's, it's twice now. <laughs> go ahead. No. Oh, my God. So, so look, okay, so... <laughs> So the whole thing is like um, the guy, you know, they, they first of all, at first he approaches like he's an enemy, but then they, they find a common bomb with the snowflake saying, and then he notices that he's hurt, he's in need, and and his experience with the enemy at the engine at this point hasn't been the greatest, you know what I'm saying? So the fact that they can come together, he can extend that olive branch to him, 
was just showing that there was good people out there, not just human nature, and they could connect on that bond. Well, they both have vengeance on their mind. Correct, correct. And then at the same point, though, but why, but why would he feel the need to, to have any kind of relationship with him? Because he doesn't know uh, what kind of person that uh, um, Leo is. You know what I'm saying? It's frontier. Like, back then, there was a lot more loyalty and respect. Like, not so much loyalty, but, like, this respect of, like, a human being. Like, I don't need to kill you. Like, I, 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 aside from the Indians and... Uh, the whites at the time, but I'm talking even amongst whites, there was this weird, with the exception of Tom Hardy, of course, in this film, but like, we're, we have to go out and save this man, even though it's going to cost us a bunch of supplies and whatever, but we just have to save this one man being Leo. Like, you know, like, this is a weird thing. Like, we would never do that nowadays. We'd be like, hey, satellite photo. Nope, don't see him. We're out of here. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's just weird. Anyway, so. You this Indian builds Leo. I mean, Leo passes out, and he builds Leo a hut in this snowstorm. And you're just like, oh man, best friend ever. That's what I was going to say at the end of your sentence ever, because you were going into your soliloquy oh, okay, as yeah. you say, and he turns out to be the best friend. Would you build me a hut in the middle of a snowstorm? I don't think you would. I wouldn't. Yeah. I don't <laughs> no, this no. Man did. I, would, I would trust you a blanket. But he bro, not only built him, but a hut, he, he left him food. But no, this is the thing. He wasn't even inside the hut. He he built it for him. And yeah, he just, was out just there in the cold. No, he left him. He, he had, left him. He, he like had he, to. He, had he to. didn't build it for he two. Him a hut and he didn't him build him. it for two. He built it for one. Yeah. Fuck that. This ain't the Titanic. Time on some. That's best friend ever. Live on for one. Yeah, this ain't the Titanic. Time on you live on. No, scoot your ass over. Let me up on this piece of wood till we both gonna float away. And Frank, <laughs> boy, what's her name? Yeah, Frank. Oh shit. Wrong movie. Uh, what was the yeah, name? Frank. I know. The diary Not, of. Diary, right? no, yeah, no, no. Anne Frank's the what's the chick the lady Titanic? in the attic with the Nazis. I know, I know, I know. What's the, what's the Titanic? Uh, Titanic's Leo and Kate Winslet. Kate, no, but what's her name? Rose. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Rose. I want to get your ass over. Come on here too. But yeah, <laughs> but no, no. But it's but I thought that was good. I mean, that just showed how they had that connection. But I thought it was crazy because in the beginning they had flat that he had relationship with in, with the engines or the yes. Indians back in the day. So he had that kind of bond. And he kind of knew how to talk to him, which was good. I think I actually, <coughs> of all the bullshit we've been talking, I kind of skipped over the fact that Leo's son is Indian. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could have... Anyway. Yeah, he's Indian, and his wife was an Indian. So that was probably... Or Indian. But yeah. You know what? Maybe someone just was like, oh, awesome. I'm going to watch it now. Probably not. Anyway. Um, so after the best friend ever sequence, uh, Leo stumbles upon a French wall potty. And steals a horse where we have another sequence where when I didn't think it could have got any worse for Leo, it turned even worse where he takes a horse off the cliff into a tree and has to <laughs> the horse dies. Hor oh, horse has got this like broken, twisted, contorted body all fucked up. Leo undresses. And then mm. gets inside of the horse while naked. And then it closes the horse's out all his Oh, yeah, he pulled all the insides out. big old tummy. So he pulled out the guts, the innards, the kidney, the liver, uh, appendix, if you got one of those, I don't know. Put all that stuff out. He hops in, he closes it up, and gets all cozy and nosy. You know what I'm saying? There's one point where he was like, point, got I was the thing sitting there, I was just, like a little giant. I was, was sitting there, I was oh, oh you ever see? Leo, baby. You know what it looked like? <laughs> Jim Carrey. Nate, uh, 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 Pet Detective, what's that shit called? Uh, Ace Ventura. Ace Ventura, when he was in the Rhino. The second one, the yeah. The Rhino. Yeah. Boom. It did look, there was just. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of, it was kind of, kind of weird. Uh, but I get it. turned off after my fat face doing that. <laughs> but it was for one, so I get it. You know what I'm saying? Good scene with that. So pretty cool. At first I was like, why would you get naked? But then I get it. You don't it. want to get the clothes all wet with bloody and all that stuff. And then you want Well, to that and you want to roll around in horse blood all naked. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> um, so at this point we actually do touch back on uh, Tom Hardy who is now taking money for supposedly burying uh, a respectable grave for Leo <laughs> and uh, Will Poulter says no way I can't take the money I, I got this man's conscience he's Which alive I don't understand that shit well back then I would have to agree at that point you might as well just set the, the money you already did the dirt you already, take the yeah, money right, you said, gotta if you're going to shoot him you should have shot Tom if, that, if that's what you're going to do you should have did it exactly um, took Tom's money too yep yep so, hey, balling balling you should have came back with him pelts and then pelts. you would have had Tom's money you'd have had Leo's money it would have been gravy and two two times a check. Uh, upon the war party getting broken up by Leo is where one of the 
uh, Frenchman comes back to the base camp where the lieutenant and Tom Hardy and Will Poulter are and says, hey, this gentleman attacked us all and we have no horses or people left now. And immediately they think, oh my gosh, we, well, we have to check to see if it was Leo that we have to, that's what I was talking about. Like this kind of weird loyalty to like this man, we're going to waste all these supplies. Never mind. We, oh, we, you know how, like, are you really going to take nine horses and a bunch of food and a bunch of like, we just for this one man nowadays, no, they wouldn't do that at all. You would never do that for your country. Right. And they <laughs> thought that basically it was a culprit that caused this little uh, disruption and they was right. And they do find Leo. They do. And they tried to almost, they almost popped him. And then the movie, I'm going to be honest with you, again, didn't see the trailer, so I had no frame of reference. But the movie, like, I'm like, oh, it's, so, it, it's, we are turning, it's only an hour 40 in, and we are turning it into a vengeance picture now, which I didn't mind. I mean, I didn't. Oh, you're right, because it was, it was a survival picture. Like, this dude yeah, is just going to like you think you're having a bad day, your best your boss made you pissed off, watch this shit, cause this he went through it. Mm-hmm. Then it so it goes from a survival pig to just oh, uh, like a like broken. Uh, well the men find him in body goes. all fucked up. Leo undresses and then mm, gets inside of the horse while naked and then closes the horse. Oh yeah, he pulled all the insides out. Big old tummy. So he pulled out the guts, the innards, the kidney, the liver, uh appendix, if you got one of those, I don't know. Put all that stuff out. He hops in, closes it up, and gets all cozy nosy. You know what I'm saying? There was one point where he was, was like, part, got the thing there, and looks just, like a little giant. I was he's sitting there. I was about to have oh, a big seen, Leo baby. You know what it looked like? <laughs> Jim Carrey, Nate, uh, 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 Pet Detective. What's that shit called? Uh, Ace Ventura. Ace Ventura. When he was in the Rhino. The second one. The yeah. Rhino. Yeah. Boom. It did look. There was just. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of. It was kind of. Kind of weird. Uh, Everybody I get just it. turned off after my fat face doing that. <laughs> but it was for one, so I get it. You know what I'm saying? Good scene with that. So pretty cool. At first I was like, why would you get naked? But then I get you it. You don't want to get the clothes all wet with bloody and all that stuff. And then you want Well, to that go. and you want to roll around in horse blood all naked. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, so at this point, we actually do touch back on uh, Tom Hardy, who is now taking money for supposedly burying... Uh, a respectable grave for Leo <laughs> and uh, Will Poulter says no way I can't take the money I, I got this man's conscience he's Which, alive I don't understand that shit well back then I would have to agree at that point you might as well just set the the money you already low. did the dirt you already, take the yeah, money right. you you there. if you're gonna shoot him you should have shot Tom if, that, if that's what you're gonna do you should have did it exactly um, took Tom's money too yep yep so, like hey, balling balling you should have came back with them pelts and then Pelts. you would have had Tom's money, you'd have had Leo's money, it would have been gravy. And two two times a check. Uh, upon the war party getting broken up by Leo is where one of the uh, Frenchmen comes back to the base camp where the lieutenant and Tom Hardy and Will Poulter are and says, hey, this gentleman attacked us all and we have no horses or people left now. And immediately they think, oh my gosh. We, well, we have to check to see if it was Leo that we have to... That's what I was talking about, like, this kind of weird loyalty to, like, this man... We're going to waste all these supplies. Never mind. We... Oh, we yeah. You know how, like, are you really going to take nine horses and a bunch of food and a bunch of, like, we... Just for this one man? Nowadays, no, they wouldn't do that at all. You would never do that for your friend. Right, and they <laughs> thought that basically it was a culprit that caused this little uh, disruption, and they was right. And they do find Leo. They do. And they tried to almost, they almost popped him. And then the movie, I'm going to be honest with you, again, didn't see the trailer, so I had no frame of reference. But the movie, like, I'm like, oh, it's, so it, it's we are turning, it's only an hour 40 in, and we are turning it into a vengeance picture now, which I didn't mind. I mean, I didn't. Oh, you're right, because it was it was a survival picture. Like this dude yeah, is just it was, it, like you think you have a bad day. Your best, your boss made you pissed off. Watch this shit, because this he went through it. Uh-huh. And then it, so it goes from a survival pick to just uh, like a. Uh, well, the men find him, and Leo's goes, "Where is he?" 
And then I'm like, yeah. oh, it's oh, like, shit, just got it's real. It's not survival. It just got real. That's what I should have known. I, 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 got, I don't know. I, we clank, clank. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Pow, pow. He and he rightfully so. Rightfully so. He oh, tried yeah. to bury a man alive. <laughs> he killed his son in front of him, and then he tried to bury him alive. Worst human being ever. If anybody's got to go, it's Tom. So it's got to go. So they get him back. They get go. Leo. The got to go. Oh, for sure. Leo. Got to go. You ever seen? Uh, this is the end. He's got to go. He was talking about uh, Danny McBride. Danny McBride. He's got to, I'm sorry. That's sorry. I love Danny McBride. Side tangent. Let's get back to both. No, this is pretty funny because they, <laughs> they did that in the video uh, interviews that they were doing. Oh, I think they did. He's like, I don't know about Danny, man, but he just can't. Um, and Danny comes in. Right. He's like, like, his fucking feet stink. I can't deal with the shit. It's not happening. Oh, man. I kind of want to watch this at the end now. Um, so they get back to the camp. Of course, Tom Hardy is gone. And he's left with all the money. And now it comes into what I had no idea. I was so happy. A Leo going after Tom Hardy now and saying, I don't give a fuck if I'm all fucked up and I need rest. It's We're, we're on to this. Um, I'll spare you the details on the lieutenant. I'm sure you can come up with it on yourself. We'll, we'll hop right into... The juicy stuff. Yeah, fast the forward, juicy fast stuff. Forward. The juicy stuff where it's on. You, you have now Leo chasing Tom through the woods, guns ablaze. Basically, they catch up to each other. It's long story short. Yep. They catch up to yep. each other. Yeah, I don't Basically, need to tell you. They go right. to the point where Leo was like, Look, yep. I need to get in contact with this man. You got a way to find him. We're going to work together. They're like, No, no, don't do it. He's like, eh, We're going to do it. Fast forward, he catch up to him. They face to face, man to man. And now, Ish got real. Boom. Go ahead. Well, I do want to talk about the fight sequence because I thought. No, that's what I'm saying. They just met up, so go ahead to it. Right. That's then the uh, uh, Alejandro's filmmaking comes into play again, where we are being tricked into not thinking there's any cut, but it plays so smoothly when they're running around. And even. I thought it was no. Yeah, when it was. The duel uh, with the knife, uh, how they're using uh, each other's weight uh, and going down. Oh, yeah. yeah. First, we, I think we get the axe chop with the. The, the hand. Oh, he cut off yeah. Tom Hardy fingers. Yeah. That shit. We get the axe chop with the. The, the hand. Oh, he cut off yeah. Tom Hardy fingers. Yeah. That shit was funny. And, well, I. <laughs> it, it hurt. Yeah, for sure. It made me grab my hand because I was like. Because right, he, he took these off right here. All these right here. And Boom. Then Tom Hardy. So, so you like this now. You're fighting like this. Yep. You're doing one of these. He went, shh. Was yeah. it these? Was it these two or these? Uh, How was these it? two. It was these two. Okay, so he, he, he got one of these. He like he's like, he making punches like this. If it would have been one more, he could have done the big I thought it was like China. this. I thought he was doing this. I thought he had these two. But he had these two. That's better than I thought. Oh, my real. We, we look retarded as hell doing this. <laughs> Go ahead. No. Go ahead. <laughs> no, it's hilarious. <laughs> Right, right. Uh, so uh, yeah. see, we shouldn't be making. There's some leg stabs, which the worst for me was when Leo stabbed him in the back of the knee. Back oh, of threw the kneecap from the back. Mm -hmm. Did he rip it down too? Mm -hmm. He hit him in the so we stabbed him in the back of the knee and ripped it down. Long story short, it was gruesome and uh, messed up. But who got stabbed in the hand? Was that Leo? That was Leo. Oh, so look, he uh, so look, he tossed him off of him, right? Tossed him off, and he just took the knife, boom, yep. in the hand, threw the shit, crucifixion style. But I do want to talk about that. I'm glad you brought that back up because I do want to talk about how they were using each other. Like the sequence, the camera is following the sequence of the changing of offense, if you will, with the struggle for this one knife. And I loved how it's done where it kind of comes to Tom Hardy's face and then we go back down to the ground and he's bringing it. Like it is just this smooth sequence, which ultimately ends up with Tom Hardy dying. Well, not dying just yet, getting stabbed. And true, and he says another despicable line. He says, uh, "Oh, you went all this way to get your vengeance, but it's not going to bring your boy back." Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> till the Daddy, end, Tom Hardy was. He still was a dick, yep. and still knew what it was like. So he went through all this shit, but you ain't get them pelts. <laughs> you ain't got no cash, and you ain't got your boy. And then we have poetic Suck justice, it. Janet Jackson, right? Mm. Is that mm. right? Mm. Poetic justice. Leo does not Red kill Tom Hardy, Russia. looks across the river, and sees the Indians. engines. Earlier in the picture, Leo had saved a woman from being raped, who happens to be with this crowd that he sees across the way. Mm. And as Tom is dying, instead he he looks at him, and in Injun says, Re revenge is left in the creator's hands. And he floats Tom Hardy's body to the Indians who ultimately take his whole scalp this time as foreshadowed by my man earlier uh, with the 
official they removal. They don't show They do not. They, they do not. You it. just hear him scream, and you're like, well, if he, he, I mean, he had been stabbed. He'd been stabbed everywhere. No fingers, leg, the fucking in the heart, the Scalping. fucking scalp. It was it was curtain call for Tom. Um, How does that work? Do you die instantly from getting scalped? Obviously not. No, but at that point, he had to been he had to pass out from the pain and bleeding pretty good. I'm just saying, like, so when you get scalped, do you just? Then again, he did take a cold water. Are you just sitting there like? Are you just sitting? uh, It would have came from one of the shock, maybe. Like, so he maybe not one of the shocks. We probably flipped the whole thing. I'm just thinking, like, how long do you die from getting scalped? No, that's another. That's the one side note. How long do you die after you get stabbing? Stab right there. Yeah, no, he oh, was messed up, definitely. He was messed up because Leo was messed up, and Leo, and Leo had to part away from that, so he was messed up. What about the part where he, like, ripped open his... Did he, like, rip open one of his stitches or something? What, what, what uh, part Tom he... bit Leo's face at one point when they were on the ground rolling around. I think he bit either his ear off or his face. That uh, happened, and then he spit it out. He uh, spit it out. Horrible. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Uh, floats him to the Indians, and we are coming to a close. Uh, would it before I talk about uh, how I felt about the end sequence? Would you like to? What? How did you feel about after he, he sees his wife? That whole sequence. Talk about that. You talking about when he like starts to flash with his wife with a little tree and like this vision. Vision, I would call it, where his wife looks at him, and then obviously walks out of frame, and you know, it, it's not your time, you know, Leo. And oh. we pan to the shot, and this is what I was going to ask you about, where Leo's staring, staring kind of down, staring kind of down, and then looks you right between the eyes at the end, and then it cuts. Now. I've heard a couple responses on how they felt about him breaking the fourth wall and looking at the crowd, if you will. And two said they liked it. Two said they didn't care for it. I I was all in. Like it was almost like that. I've been through all this. Should should I or I'm going to or will I? I, I liked I liked the fact that he looked at the audience at the very end sequence. I thought it was good. What about you? Uh, I thought it just made, I didn't think it added that much for that much more necessity in the movie. I thought it was a good way to end it. I feel like it left you with that, it left you with that perspective of kind of, cause it made you curious for one, like, so what happens? Like, you really don't know, but him looking at you, like you said, it just kind of, it just, I think the way, when he looked at you, I think it was just him trying to show you a reflection of what he's been through. So you, it was basically him looking at you saying, look, at, was, my, yeah. look at me and look at what I've been through and that my face says it. And that's like, that's what it was. It was just like, when you look at somebody's eyes, you be like, man, damn, you've been, that's through, it. You've been through a lot, bro. Like you've been through a lot. And it was just that last moment of him just looking at you and having you relate to him. So I think it was that last thing. Like I said, the whole movie, you was building a relationship with the character. What better way to end up building that relationship to have him look at you now and say, I just got through going through some bullshit. Do you feel me? Do you feel me? <laughs> See, now I'm looking at you. I, I, know, I right? need like an action camera. But no, I thought it was phenomenal. Like yeah, I, said, I thought the movie was done very well. I appreciate the whole movie. We're running kind of long here. We mm. got to wrap it up. But I thought it was phenomenal. I think you think the same. Uh, what, what's your last thoughts on it before we wrap it up? Nothing. Dude. See it. It's yeah, it's my good. second favorite movie of the year, I think. Yeah, go out and see it's phenomenal. Mad Max, in yeah. case you were wondering, Mad Max would be number one. You guys go out and uh, go out and enjoy it. Thanks for watching again. It's been a pleasure, man. Uh, same time, same channel. You guys be cool. Check the day, check the day. Feeling like parolees on they exit day. Honda late, ain't rocking that roll. Ain't no more time is up. Zayn a diamond shining bright as us. Faded light it up. Dug in with my Padres. Meals we eat and check the entrees. Know my name in every country. Engineer, only nigga that can punch me. Nigga, I go crazy on the mark ass nigga trying to fuck with the Diamond Lane gang on me though. It's showtime. No fever. Same nigga when I came, gon' be the same nigga when I lead up. Heartbreaking like pillow. I do everything on the D-Lo. Cause I don't like niggas on my steel. Hit the connect, get fresh. Spray on some cologne. It's two o'clock. Lil' mama blowing up my phone. I'm like, that bitch, I be there four o'clock. I pulled up at 501. Braxing on my 501s. Hustling till the 50 come. We finna throw a lot of ones. How to made a check today. Check today. Feeling like parolees on they ex. Today, I delay, can't rock in that roll, ain't no more time is yeah. up Cause ain't a diamond shining bright as us, faded light it up Little mama smoking the she eye, 
Sniff a line in the ass, might die. Fuck it, I'ma keep on going crazy though. Killing with the 80s flow. So take a hustling ratchet over a fine ungrateful lazy oh. oh. About to drop a classic on my mama. I'm just letting y'all know. Let these niggas have it, pay them back for all that janky though. Yeah. That janky ho shit that I put up with without doing shit to niggas. Mama told me if I see a sucker, I should lick the nigga. No homo for all you homo niggas that's gonna try to say that was homo because y'all don't know how real niggas really get down when it's real with them get down. We don't even play like that. Fuck any nigga that had a problem with me on me, my nigga, it could stay like that. Confident over arrogance, I don't hate on niggas on me, I wasn't made like that. Cause on God, when y'all niggas was trying to get it on me, I was paid like that. On me, nigga, I was paid like that. Nigga, I'm grabbing my dick right now, thinking about how I went down back in the day on me, I was a fade like that. One on one, I'm gonna fade like that. Especially when my niggas with me. Fuck flexing, no question. Anytime my niggas hit me, right hook to a nigga's kidney. Left jab, he gone as Whitney. Hard P, got bitches with me with no idea. They gon' let them in cause they know I be and they know I pay and they know I'm on Not a been places they've never gone, not a done things they'll never do I love me, I ain't never used it, I'm on search for a better boom My money talking so legible, I'm taking shots with my Beretta pulled out I got all these keys I ain't never pulled out You ain't gon' pop it boy, don't pull out Put that out, shit I got the good out Run her home, lock out the wood out Make, make a call and I'll bring the word out Ready, Shit. Shit. <laughs> Tell that bitch I'll be there at 4 o'clock. I pulled up at 501. Ratchet on my 501. Hustle to the 501. Tell that bitch I'll be there at 4 o'clock. I pulled up at 501. Ratchet on my 501. Hustle to the 501. Diamond!